value shared. Hello, how is everybody doing today? So let's get started. Um, everyone, focus, please. Uh, moderators, get your get your guns out. Uh, let's 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 go in. All right. So common beginner mistakes uh, for fourteen day challenges, especially fourteen day challenge or fourteen day challenge misconceptions. Um, you guys make the backgrounds either too dark or too light, and that affects the way you draw with the colors. However, it's not the background that's caused a contrast problem for this character. It's just the skin tone that you've used. I don't think you know which skin tone you're working from. I'll talk about that in a second. One of the biggest problems with painting a face, which is what the 14-day challenge is about, what the 14-day challenge is for, is uh, learning how to perfect the features and learning about the beauty of the eye. And portraiture in general, and how much how much of the portrait is, uh, the portrait's importance is invested in the eye. Um, so right now you didn't have focused eyes, which was really, really throwing off the portrait completely. So you need to focus them. Focus just means crossed. That's it. It's just a stupid way to say it is just crossed. So we have to cross them a little bit. If you have them perfectly, I think you mirrored, reflected. I don't know what you did. But when you flip and duplicate mirror reflection so you don't have to render the other eye, which is, I think is a really, really bad to do for yourself and for your own improvement, um, you end up getting a, a crossed eye that does not, an uncrossed eye that looks derpy and spaced out. All right. Another problem is when the eyes are too circular. Uh, the eyeball is circular, yes, but that does not mean that we have a, actually, I'm going to keep the, that I made over here. So the eyeball is too circular. Um, sorry, the eyeball is perfectly circular, but the space around it, the eyelids are too circular. Eyelids tend to be a little bit more elongated along a circular um, effect of the, of the eyeball. So there is circular, perfectly circular around here, but over here and here, things are stretched along an anchor, the inner and outer corner, corners of the eye. So we end up having a longer eye. All right, so what I did is I duplicated it so I can get the perfect circle back. This perfect circle right here. So perfect circle and then long eye. So the eyeball is circular. The eyeball, the ball of the eye, the thing that gets poked out, the thing that pops out. <laughs> um, that really, really uh, horrific thing that ha can happen to you when you... Okay, I'll shut up with Sibrek. Now it's just getting a little bit more of it. <laughs> starting to remember all those movies as kids that where the eye just popped out. Um, but that thing is circular. That thing is a perfect circle. But the skin itself, the socket is not a perfect circle. The quarters are never, corners are never a perfect circle. But they do get affected in the lower and outer bulges of the eye creases along a circular pattern. So I'm just doing that. Also, the lower eyelids are less, are just smaller. I guess they're just less in every respect. They're less wide. They're less long. They are, um, they protrude less. They catch less light. They're less in everywhere that, uh, in every way, than the upper eyelids. So we gotta tuck those guys in. All right. So I'm just making that seamless. So sorry about the hum in the background. Okay, so let's just take a look at these simple corrections. I'm going to darken the skin as well. Very, very washed out. And another common beginner mistake, along with everything I just mentioned, is over contrast. Way too much contrast, bro. That's just, oh man. When we decrease contrast, as soon as I did that, just take a look. There was nothing else going for this painting other than that contrast. It means your edge work was off. You need to watch some nose tutorials ASAP. ASAP. And I have so, so many of them. I have so many of them out there available for you guys. So a big part of the nostril, a big part of the nose is the size of the nostril. So we need to make those big enough so that they actually are a nose. You can see I can make them. I made them pretty big, and then the septum is lower. All common anatomy rules consistent throughout all noses across all faces. Sometimes for an Asian nose 
or an African nose, we do have a balanced septum with the rest, and there's not much of a bridge elevation. Do you see that? That was problematic. Uh, you have way too much light illuminating the lower part right here. Way too much light. You don't, you don't outline the nostril like that. The nostril just extends its shadow all the way down into the cast shadow. Half the nose is in shadow just like this. Only half the nose. And then all of these are beginner mistakes. That, that was a beginner nose. Um, and I don't like labeling stuff as beginner, but when you call yourself, you know, beginner, you have to, it's a signal. Whenever you hear the word beginner describing your work or your skill, it's a signal for you to drop everything, grayscale everything, and start painting some cubes. Start painting geometry. Start painting the lowest common geometric polygon shape version of that one thing that you don't know how to do. So watch that nose video that I have out there and it'll describe exactly which geometric shape to use with respect to the nose and to make sure that it, it's completely memorized by you in all rotations. That is your next month. In my time off, you, Mr. Program Manager, um, <laughs> uh, you have to, I don't know why you named it Program Manager, you are in charge of, uh, you are assigned noses. You are assigned noses for my time off and when I get back I expect another post on the community channel with a much better nose painted from you. Of course along with all the eye stuff. The lower eyelids are darker. The whites of the eyes is another common beginner mistake. You guys just either over lighten them or over darken them. Just leave them alone. Let them be a mid-tone. The whites of the eyes do not uh, demand that much attention. There's nothing going on in the whites of the eyes. And when we paint darkness ev everywhere, it means there's something going on. So let's take a look at a reference over here. All right. All right, get ready to get scared. i got to scare you guys or else you guys don't learn. So pretty eye images, right? Just nondescript value for the eyes. There's nothing going on. There's no paint happening there. Maybe excessive over contrast and overexposure by the camera. Things are a little less white, but there's nothing going on in here. Nothing is, is actually going on in the white of the eye. It's just a mid-tone or lighter than the mid-tone of the skin. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna test it first. I'm gonna try to find the reference first for you. This is what happens when there's something going on in the eye. Alright? Get ready? You guys ready? I swear to God, it's for the betterment of your future. This is what happens when something is going on in the eye, when there is a value in the eye that we need to paint in. And this is what you guys are accidentally doing when you are when you are painting the eye so so such detail. So let's grayscale it. It's that same value, guys. But you think this is a normal value for the eye, it's not. This is what, what it means to have extra excessive grayscale around the eye. All right, so what you have to do is raise this value, go in and raise this value back up to white as if there was no dark red disrupting all of this. And there's no excessive redness everywhere. And you gotta smoothen it out because all those veins cause that texture, that extra texture on top of the eye. And then a little shadow over here. All right, so you guys are doing way too much. You're giving way too much information where there shouldn't be information. Uh, your values are this dark, and that means that this is happening. All right, I had, I'm sorry, I had to scare you. There's a great deal of anatomy when it comes to eyes. You guys better get yourselves ready for it. And great deal of anatomy in art, period. And that's what it means when you guys give me all this excessive, all I see is bloody eyes. I just see bloodshot, like drug abuse. I just, all I see, that's the, that's the connotation that comes with excessive information painted around the eyes. And I, I want to see less of that from you. I'm so sorry if you guys <laughs> got grossed out. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. So I'm trying to clean this up. I don't know what anime influence you have out there that made you darken the eyes too much, but it was too much. Especially if you're going for a realistic render. Everything goes out the window. Any of your dependencies from the past just disappear. So I know I make this look easy. I know I fixed that nose pretty quickly, 
but I, I really do think that if you guys follow the same um, treatment plan that I gave you guys, which is the ge geometries and studying geometries, you'll have the same kind of effect in your work. You'll work much faster, you'll have a, a much more efficient workflow, your brush strokes will count for something, you'll always have a destination for them, you're not dicking around, <laughs> as I like to say, with your brush, not knowing what to do. If you find yourself not knowing what to do too many times across the painting, it means that you need to stop and start thinking about geometry. Stop think, start thinking about form studies. I know I say form studies, but it's time I be a little bit more specific with what I mean exactly. So it's about painting the cylinders where you find them and arms and seeing the cylinder in the arms, seeing the cylinder in across the face, seeing the sphere across the face. So this face now is arguably way more beautiful, way more easy on the eyes than what it looked like before. And I'll show you what it looked like before. Just cast a quick shadow to, to sync with the shadow of the nose. The lips are a little bit under-rendered, a little bit overly under-rendered. Under-rendered is good for lips, but we have no edge work and no dark spots. Okay, excessive contrast, derpy eyes, nose that has zero form to it. It's just pure symbol, there's nothing happening. Very, very difficult to hire this, very difficult to get away with this, and this is your day four. Um, so I expect all these changes and more and keep them consistent. Don't revert back to these symbols. If you find yourself reverting, I'm sure someone will notify you in the critiques. Uh, but uh, stay away from contrast for now. Focus on delivering the blacks where they need to be and uh, figure out which skin tone you have, better anatomy for the eyes and all that. Okay, so I hope that helps. So this is an example of where we have too, too little circular shape in the eye. So yes, long is good, but this is too long or too wide. Wide is good for the eyes. Before we had the one bit before this, there was almost no wideness at all. Well, this is too much wideness. The common beginner mistake for 14 day challenges is painting in a tile. You're not supposed to be painting in a tile canvas. Oh my God, my back, <laughs> so much pain. Um, you're not supposed to be painting, and she says this, she laughs. <clears throat> just paint with a longer, like a profile canvas. And the reason why is because, did I say profile? A uh, portrait canvas. And the reason why is because it's going gonna, it's gonna to inhibit the growth of the length of the portrait. You're going to think that you're at a good length because you fit in the canvas. Well, you fit in the wrong size of the canvas, so it was wrong to begin with. The length that you're referencing it against, which is the tile of the canvas, is a mistake. You're supposed to be let, uh, measuring it against a longer canvas because the head grows in length, not in width. So this was a very short head. I can't tell if it's male or female, but I'm going to just give it a general thinness in the neck. The jawline. Oh my god. <laughs> so much pain. I'm so sorry, guys. The jawline is... Um, here, let me just lower the ears, allow around the eyes. Ears start at the eyes. The jawline width, I'm just going to keep it general. Again, not too feminine, not too masculine. I don't know which gender you're going for. Another mistake for a 14-day challenge. I'm very specific about you choosing the gender for the 14-day challenge. You are designers. You are required to know the genders that are, the two genders that are in this world. <laughs> And um, I'm talking about biological genders, real genders, measurable sexes, scientifically, the differences in hormonal structure between male and female affect the choices we make with our brush, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. Right, all that other social gender stuff you can leave for Instagram. All right. <clears throat> I'm just raising that up here and there so we can have some length and show you the before and after. Well, we're going to lose the length now, but... <clears throat> and, uh, I'm just going to do that. So sorry about that air conditioner. Before, after. Do you see how squished it was? So it looks, it looks like a feminine male or masculine-ish female. Um, the way to push it into female is with eyebrows. We do get faces of perfectly healthy females that look a little bit like this. 
uh, but the jawline I think is still a little bit too um, stated. For a female we have less like a more like a curved jawline that reaches a point in the chin just like that. So that female faces tend to be a little bit like that. Uh, less strength in the jawline, less, less cube-like shape for the jaw just like this. Another massive mistake in 14 day challenger um, portraits is this excessive shadow at the top of the head. I ask you a question boys and girls, all 180, 190 of you. Um, when we have a ball floating in thin air and the light is coming from top down, whoop, what the hell was that? Light is coming from top down. Is the shadow over here? Sorry, yes, of course it is. Light is coming top down. <laughs> is the shadow over here? Is the shadow over here? Is the shadow over here and over here? I don't know. Is the shadow just like a little bit over there? Just in patches? No. Where does the shadow point to? I honestly am going to wait for the answer because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go mad seeing these submissions. Where does the shadow point to? Hmm? No, no, yes, good. <laughs> All those cuties saying no and answering my question, I just feel like giving you a snack. No. Um, this directs, the iris needs to be very round circle always. Would it be recommended to practice drawing circles or check with the ellipse tool to see if it's round enough? Ellipse tool, right click with the basic brush on Photoshop, use a protractor, use a circle, have a circle nearby, the back of your pen, whatever you got to do to make a perfect circle. It's not about you being able to draw a perfect circle that measures your skill. It's your understanding of light on form. Um, some people's hands shake all the time. My hands shake all the time. Um, and I don't trust my hand to provide me with a perfect circle. The function and the mechanics need a perfect circle. I'm not going to leave it to human error and my shaky hand to draw a perfect circle. I'm going to use a stamp or some kind of guide to make sure I have all of that realism intact. Okay, yeah, I'll give you a star. <laughs> the opposite side, exactly. The shadow is going to be over here. So why do I find shadows over here? Sh do you guys see how ridiculous this is now that I illustrate it with a basic geometry? You guys see how ridiculous it is when I find shadow up here? Do you want to know why you guys put shadow up there? Because you're, you're dying to make some lines happen. And you wish you could have some lines. So this is like a descendant of your line dependency. Hey, I need to just outline this area a little bit. Just, just bring in a little bit more, you know, arrows here. Look, there's some arrows pointing to, you know, this is, this is the eye, guys. This is the eye. Uh, you don't need that. If the shadows point anywhere, they point away from the light source. That is the rule of realism. That's all realism is demanding of you. And we just need to think about this in its core geometry. If you bring it down to even without the cube, forget the z-axis for a second, just for a second though, a uh, split second. Um, we think about a blob, organic form study. You guys have seen those before. We just think about a blob and we see that you used way too much darkness up there and way too little darkness down here. All right, and if you wanted to create a differentiation between the temple, the forehead, and the, and the cheeks, and the side of the head, and the ears, that's where edge work comes in. So when we get rid of all this excessive contrast, which is, or not excessive contrast, over blending, which is a massive beginner mistake. And by the way, I'm going to ask uh, some people to um, list to me all the beginner mistakes I, uh, I listed. And whoever lists them all for a going away gift for my two weeks, I'm going to give you a brush set. I'm going to give you all my brush sets. If you don't have them, start writing some notes down. <laughs> right, so this is officially, this is officially on. It's officially on for note takers. If you don't have brushes yet, that is. All right, so what I'm doing right now is fixing this overblending problem, another common beginner mistake. Sorry I snuck that up on you guys, I probably should have told you. But this is good, that way the people who are note takers, who don't have a brush set, or would like my brush sets, not that they're much of an award, but uh, you know, I, I, I feel like you, know, you guys had a good head start for the, for the gift giving that is today. Alright, so I'm working on some edge work to try to create a difference between the planes of the cube. We're back on the cube now. And it's helping us decide on some form. Right? We don't leave it exactly like this. We don't just leave it looking like this. 
We obviously blend away. Things are organic. This is an organic face. But we start off with some edges. And the blending brush that we use isn't this massive blending brush. So for good note takers who I see present a really great list. If I forget to ask about the list, Tommy, just remind me. <laughs> um, I give you this, this smudge brush set as well. So if you guys don't know what my smudge brushes do, you combine them with the smudge tool on Photoshop and they are my own of, um, of my own design. They're really great for creating that feeling of a, like a hand smudging technique so you don't over depend on the eyedropper tool to blend. So you see I go straight to it. I use it every class, every two minutes, every one minute I go right back to it. And this is how I keep myself connected to my traditional technique, transfer all my skills over into my sketchbook. All right, some shadows are needed and excess just around the sides for the ears, right here under the cheekbone. Again, depending on male or female, I'm just going to go with female for now. You want to rush your female over your male. You will be assigned more females to design than males. It's just the just just like an industry thing right now. We design more females than we do males. At least from my experience, I'm not sure about exact statistics, but all right, I'm just perfecting that over here. Only one person's going to get these notes, so whoever has the best list. Then you post your list to the community wall for class notes, under class notes. All right, see these are the perks of coming to the live streams instead of being those lazy watchers on YouTube. <laughs> I'm joking. I love you guys on YouTube. I'm sorry. I know you guys have work and stuff or a different time zone. All right, so I'm just completing this. And again, the exact same issue, the whites of the eyes are disturbed they have some kind of disturbance happening and it's it's standing in the way of me reading a healthy eyeball. Way too much of a point over here. And then again, lack of focus in the eyes. The eyes are not focused on one object. They are in the distance, confused, lost. Um, yeah, so for the notes, you got to make sure it's about the beginner mistakes. Every All the basic bullets that I've made about beginner mistakes. So all three brush sets, you get them. So I'm trying to focus the eyes to look at one object. How do I do that? Please refer to your notes. Right. I really want him to gaze at me. I want him to stare into my soul. That's the impact of a portrait. So I'm a portrait artist by specialty, which is why I spend so much time on portraits, which is why portraits are so important to me in my portfolio. They're more important to me than gestures and character tra drawings than landscapes because I, I feel like that is where my muse is. That's what started me drawing. That's what I started with a long time ago, just faces. Extending the, the, the vertical length just a little bit more. The vertical growth of the eyeball to feel a little bit more friendly. And I just, I just I, I balance one eye first. I look at it as if it's looking at me. So I, I, I get one eye to look at me. The other eye just follows by me just staring at the periphery right here and, sorry, staring at the nose and balancing the periphery vision. So you're, where your brush is moving is not where your eyes are looking so you can make them balance. And just look at that. Doesn't every girl just want, or if this is a guy, I'm seeing it more as a guy now. Doesn't every girl just want a guy to look at her like this? Looking away, kind of derped. And here, just staring into your soul. It's like, baby, I can't do without you. All right. That's how you want. That's the portrait you want. That's the eye. That's the gaze. That's what you want out of your portrait. Something to speak. Something to, you can tell, say so much with just a focus and focusing in the eyes. So I hope that's illustrated that to you a little bit more. All right. So let's take a look at the before and after. Before, compact. He was just rolled out of a purse. He needs to stretch out a little bit in the sun. Now I cleaned up the back, the sides. I'm not using any excessive shadows over here. I don't want to. I don't feel like I need it. Um, the cheeks are a little bit rounded and friendly looking. 
but I feel like altogether his face is much more approachable. More realistic is a word you could use, but it's a very general term considering all that went into making these adjustments. What you need to do is work on rendering, learning where the sharpness is in the nose, how to make the nose look like it's more complete. I'm not going to cover that today because that's way too much work. I do have a whole an hour and a half dedicated for noses, almost two hours I think, on my channel. Just search up noses on my video history and you'll find a ton of refreshed new, uh, like, uh, you know, er, late stuff that I've done. Not stuff from five or six years ago, or four or five years ago. Yes. Okay. So, massive mistake for 14 day challengers, too massive for me to paint over. You should be studying a top down light source. Why is it problematic to have, in your memorization, a light source that comes from the top right or from the extreme side, extreme left, extreme right, or a light source that comes from the bottom? Why is it problematic? Why do you guys think that is? Let me see if I can illustrate it for you a little better. Oh, fuff, 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 fuff. I do have the recent portrait studio version. Oh, this is why I need my own portrait studio updated version of oh I don't have it yet because it's in development, so I haven't haven't been given the latest draft. I think I still have um the prototype. Let me see if I can open it up so I can show you guys. Um, all right, extract here. This is the demo. So you guys, fantastic. Going down, play. <coughs> Lighting. God, the ratio is all off. Um, all right. So let me just fix that. Set that up. All right. So why is it so problematic to have a light source that is completely from this direction? Or completely from this direction or completely from the bottom which is not uh, detectable right now it's too bright so it's not it's not pointing up enough let me just decrease that I don't think he set me up with the complete version or having one of these or having one of these why why is it a problem why is it a problem Sorry, I'm still figuring this out. There we go. Why is this problematic? Uh, fewer features are hidden in top-down light source. Beautiful answer. Excellent answer. Uh, fewer features are hidden in top-down light source. So we have no dark spots here. There's no black and white, but this is typically how your contrast should look. Uh, this is a dark environment, so there's no reason why the brightness should be that high. Things are darker when the environment is dark, so you can get to control the background with that. Um, but why? Because you are hiding less features, so you're hiding an entire half of a face like this. This is not, this is not ideal for any kind of character design. And if you're studying a 14-day challenge 14 times, you've drawn the same portrait so you can perfect it for that 15th time you're hired for it, that 65th time you're hired for it, you have 14 times you knew you went in and made sure you corrected all your mistakes. Those 14 times you used them and you studied the wrong presentation, the wrong staging of the face. You can't do that. Do not do this anymore. It's top-down lighting or nothing for the 14-day challenge. After you've perfected the 14-day challenge's lighting format, template, then you can feel free to adjust the light source as you go. But it is, it, it, it's not, I mean, that's why we made a portrait studio because it's so difficult to find references that are a good representation of the light fidelity. Um, but, uh, but you don't need to be a genius to, 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 to say, oh, well, a light that's coming from the top right makes the face look more mysterious. It, mysterious because it's hidden. Mysterious means lack of information. She looks mysterious to me. Uh, and I don't want mysterious. I don't want anything with the 14 day. I don't want any emotion. I, except for the eyes, maybe learn how to express something with the eyes. Maybe focus alone. This has excellent focus. Um, excellent shape in the eyes for the female. Excellent, he excellent head structure, even though it's a tile canvas. But the cast shadow is all wrong. It's completely hiding the most important parts of the face. One whole half. 
and that is not ideal for a 14 day challenge. You're on day 11, someone should have notified you of this. I did in the FAQ on my channel say that it should be top down light source. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's go into liquefy for this piece. Another common problem for a 14 day challenge is you're not studying beauty. Uh, you have to study beauty, meaning that you're not, the problem is that you're not studying it. The beginner mistake, the issue is that you're not studying it. I want you to know how to draw a beautiful face because it's more prosperous for you to know how to draw a beautiful face. All those classical masters, all the masters of the past, all the, all the paintings you've ever looked at and loved, most likely the person is either handsome or beautiful if it's a portrait or a character design. You're not going to find that unless it's a deliberate attempt at drawing something disgusting or appalling or gross like an ogre or a bad guy or a villain. You want to break all the rules of beauty, all the rules of health. I'll just make them look all disgusting all together so the audience can hate them so you can express how much you as the writer don't want them to be seen as friendly and create a threat for the protagonist. I want you to know how to draw a beautiful face, all right? It's really important that you know how to draw one. Having the jawline almost balanced with the forehead, big problem. For females, which I think you're going for here, we have a rounded off and a pointed edge, just like that triangle of beauty I always talk about. A baby face is just uncanny on an adult. Um, and that's why we don't really relate it to a healthy face. An obese face, someone who's like 500 pounds, um, gotta help them with their struggles. Uh, but um, yeah, it's not ideal. We don't, we don't wanna learn how to draw that before we draw a pretty face. Sorry, art is very vain. Designing characters for games is very vain. And that's, that's just what we're, that's the industry we're in right now. If you don't want to draw perfectly beautiful people, use references as much as possible. That way you build a more organic um, awareness of naturally occurring faces, naturally occurring features. But if you want to learn how to draw without reference, you want to have that kind of portfolio, uh, powerful illustration, um, reference free or with very little need for reference, then learning how to draw a beautiful face and learning all the fundamentals of it is really important. Biggest fundamental, eyes are widest thing on the face. We have a nice square shape for the head. Neck is nice and slender on a female. I'm just talking about female beauty. Male beauty is very similar, except it needs all these uh, hormonal um, signatures of like post-puberty, pre-puberty, male or female, look pretty similar. 14-year-old boy looks just like a 14-year-old girl sometimes. Or not, that's, that's, that's still post. Um, like a 10-year-old, let's say, or 8-year-old. All right, eyebrow arc. This outline has completely flattened the eyes. The nose septum is not as low, is as, as low as the nostrils. The nostrils should be higher, the septum is lower. The distance between the nose and the mouth should be lessened. The eyes have no focus. They look down, they should be looking up. That's another common beginner mistake. Having eyes that always look down because you guys forget there should be white underneath the pupil. White underneath the iris, sorry. For females, the outer corner is higher. And then we have that same circular problem issue. It's both too long and not circular enough for this piece. And you'll see in the before how uncanny and non-human it looked. It looked like that one guy at the start of Prometheus. You know those people in Prometheus and also in Alien Covenant now that that, that movie came out? That, that, uh, those people? Those alien people with the big foreheads? It kind of looks like, like a non... It's like a humanoid. Just like nothing that we're used to seeing. Very unique kind of face. Very um, Da Vinci kind of face. An idealized beauty so idealized it's not it's it's out of date this kind of beauty that you're studying and it's not realistic so idealized it's not realistic all right before after more bone structure the squareness at the forehead really did it lower septum more believable nose and another massive beginner mistake, humongous, the size of size of the size of Saturn, all right, is the value sharing. 
Size of Jupiter. Which one's bigger? Jupiter. No? Saturn? I think Jupiter is the biggest. I don't know. <laughs> how, how can I not know this? Alright, it's okay. Alright. Excessive value sharing. The hooded eye is fine. Hooded eyes can be very beautiful. This is not an eyebrow. This is an eyebrow bone. You do not have an eyebrow right now. You are missing an eyebrow. So don't draw one in. You either have one or you don't. Right now you didn't have one. And I'll draw one in for you in a second. All right. Another common beginner mistake is excessive. And this is an example of value sharing as well. You've used the same almost kind of value to describe the bone structure of the eyebrow bone that looks away from the light as something that looks above at the light, above towards the light. This is wrong. This is value sharing. This is why I said it's as big as a planet because it's everywhere. It manifests in all kinds of ways. Value sharing is a massive problem. And just take a look. Exactly the same issue with the forehead. Shadow at the top of the head for no reason at all. Even though the head is staring directly at the light. Look at the shine. If I was allowed, <laughs> and you guys were in my class, I'd probably get a ruler, and I'd probably get that ruler to connect with your butt a little bit. Just to, you know, smack you on the butt a little bit. Because this is, this is how mad I am about value sharing. I, I would probably, you know, just in a spank or two. <laughs> You're okay with that. Because this just, uh, it gets me, it gets me. Why would you share the same value for two objects that are completely unrelated contour-wise? But it's, you know, as a teacher, it's common sense to me, but for a student just starting out, it's not as easily detected, so. That's fine, I forgive you. All right, so that's more value sharing over here. Value sharing also happens with light values that you use. Not just dark values on the side of the nose. It's about using black on the side of a head or the side of a sphere instead of pointing all the shadows down. There needs to be shadows here in the eye socket. Because it's a socket. It's a hole. It's recessed. All right. Another common issue with light or with, with beauty is that the eyes are not far enough apart. They need to be further apart. When they're too close to each other, that's when you have a problem. Do you guys want to see something that you can't unsee? Do you guys want to see something you can't unsee? All right. Who's the actor for um, Dudley? Dursley, is that his name? I forget. The actor is... Actor. Uh, ha Harry Melling. Harry Melling, I'm so sorry I'm using your face like this, but I just want to describe exactly what we're looking at here. See how close his eyes are? He's a very handsome guy. Very handsome. But he's a boy, so he gets away with it. But his eyes are very close to each other. Now let's see another guy that was also on screen with him. And we consider him handsome, but still very, very close to each other. The, the mouth is almost, when he smiles, is almost as wide. All right, let's think of a really, really handsome actor. So handsome actor. You can't unsee it once you look at it. All right. This, this son of a bitch. All right, so... <laughs> See how wide his eyes are away from each other? But they're still technically pretty close, but they're pretty wide compared to him. All right. Let's see some more. Eh, too beautiful. Want to know why he's too beautiful? Because his eyebrow arc, his eye size, his lashes, that excessive light under him. Even this handsome guy, look how straight his eyebrows are. So straight eyebrows for males, closer to each other than usual. But a handsome guy can still have eyes that are far apart. But for a female, you don't get away with it the way you get away with it with a guy. So I just, show, I just showed you two extremes of eye distance on a male. And neither of them is good enough for a female. It's to that level. It's not good enough for a female for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Alright, so we're extending the distance between the eyes. And just take a look at the difference. A little bit more beauty. And if we extend them even further. And I need to focus them back. She'll be even more beautiful. 
and beautiful by the definition of the standard measurement of beauty. All right? So keep your pants on. I'm not telling you you're ugly. A lot of people say, hey, well, I just look like this, and I, you're saying I'm ugly. Well, no, I don't know. You've never seen your face. I'm not saying anything's ugly or beautiful, but with regards to character design, there is definite beauty and definite ugliness that we as artists have to memorize. All right, maybe this one is a little bit too far off. There we go. Perfect. Which is the rule of portraiture. Perfection is important. All right, before, after. Male-ish, female-ish. And then, of course, you have the eyebrows, which are a massive component of the gender, that, that they really bring the gender in the face, along with everything else, of course. But female's eyebrow needs an arc to it. Maybe that's a little bit too arced. I need to zoom out for this. Okay. So it's a very... Um, sculpted forehead and sculpted brow bone that we have here. But I'm painting in a very modest eyebrow. Smudging away, of course, this is the smudge brush. So the eyebrows look like they're growing right out of the skin. I'm sorry about the delay in the stream today. I had a million things to do before I leave for my break. And, um, you know, I really don't want to. Last time I tried going on a break, it's just, oh, my God, I don't know how to do it. I think I'm a workaholic. <laughs> I'm an undiagnosed workaholic. I'm just going to duplicate this over to save time. But a big part of what makes females beautiful is this eyebrow arc. And for males, you just flatten the eyebrow. All right, so I'm just thinning her eyebrows just a little bit. It seems like her kind of face has thin eyebrows. So I'm just going to thin them out and then just continue smudging, making them look like they're actually growing out of the skin, which is another beginner mistake. Eyebrows that look like they're pasted on, which I think one of these is... They look like they're drawn on with Sharpie. You want them smudgy. That's the realistic aspect. And after you've smudged enough, then you can go in the brush stroke or two to detail as you need to. She's no longer looking up, so I want to fix that lack of focus that happened after we created a distance between the eyes, and then I'll show you the before and after. These are undisputable, indisputable, what's the term? Indisputable, undisputable, undisputed rules of beauty that you cannot ignore if you're trying to study a face, if you're trying to perfect your portraiture, which is a big part of your portfolio. Massive part of your portfolio. Okay, so what we do is we align this one to look at us. I do need to go in and make some white happen underneath. And then we align this one. These eyes are so specifically painted. It's just, uh, if I do anything, they'll instantly become asymmetrical. I just want her to look like she's looking at me. And if she's looking at me, the artist, she'll look at the viewer. And the viewer will have that much more of a relationship with the painting, which means the longevity, which promises the longevity of their audience. And that's how you keep, yeah, that's how you get people to pay for your work. <coughs> okay. All right. I'm just going to soften her eyebrows just a little bit more, just so they don't look as stern. I'll merge them down first. Filter, liquefy. Again, stay away from expressions for the 14 day challenge. So, too high on the inside means innocent or timid, and too low means angry. So, here she looks a little bit tense. And then, at last, 
the white underneath the eyes. Good job on the waterline. You only have it lit. That's like one of the best things you've done on this portrait. You only had the waterline lit on the most outward part of it. I'm really proud of that. And then we've got some illumination and I'll be all done. I'll try to do like a, as many streams as possible on my time off and keep just, you know, the after hours going, keep the community alive. I don't like being gone for so long because I do notice like a decrease in activity when I'm not around. <laughs> so it's really, it torments me because I, I wish that everything continues just fine if I were to ever disappear or anything like that. <laughs> you know, it's really morbid, but I like knowing that, you know, you guys are still active even though I might not be. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be back right back after two weeks or a week, and inshallah. But, yeah. I'm just illuminating them that way. You guys ready for the after? All right, the eyes are the same size. You could make them a little bit bigger. The nose, you could make it a little bit bigger. The actually, actually, the nose is a little bit too small. Let me just correct that real quick. Increase size. I have to balance the age, which is another beginner mistake. So guys don't balance ages through different features. The eyes are usually older, the nose is usually younger, the lips are a little bit too plump for males or balance the difference between male and female and ages especially. A big one I've noticed. The lips are a little bit off to the side, see that? But I'm going to leave that just, just how it is. I love that. I love how the lips are asymmetrical and off to the side. And seriously, the way you painted the lips after my slight edits is beautiful. You still have shadows where they're supposed to be. Light, dark, light, dark. Maybe a little bit more light at the top. But it's just how you, the silhouette of the object, the silhouette of how it looked. Ready? Okay. Before, after. So this was a, it looked non-human. And you can't use this on character design. If they hired you to paint the next, I don't know, concept for whoever, they're not gonna, you're not going to get hired because your portfolio is full of this dated uh, face, this type of face, which is very dated. It's, it's not applicable anymore in modern commercial art. You can use it for all kinds of personal stuff or stuff that's statement or abstract, but you've got to learn how to paint a beautiful face as well. Um, and these are the units that allow a face to feel beautiful, feel normal. So I got rid of that excessive Michelangelo type lip. And I softened it up to be a little bit more modern and natural, naturally occurring. Gave it eyebrows, made the eyes look up, not so spaced out. Focused the eyes, created a distance between them. Gave them a more natural circular shape along the el elongated silhouette of the lids. Brought that nose septum down. Just standardizing the face, really, is what you have to do. And then we have the background, which is the final beginner mistake I'm going to discuss today. I don't have time for everything else. I'm so sorry. Uh, but this is the final beginner mistake. Backgrounds and light environment need to be, and I think I just discussed this in the start as well, need to be balanced as well. See how much white is on her skin? how much of that light has hit her skin, it means the background is in a really bright room. She's of medium skin tone. Where you had it before it was too dark. I'll go even lighter. All right. Before, after. No more shadow at the top. You have a consistent sphere, a three-dimensional volume in it. I would lighten the sides of her head even more as well, keeping the ears uh, I'll do it now. Keeping the ears out of darkness as well so that they look like cavities. Ears are technically part of the dark spots, but I don't count them because they are way too far off and away. So you don't have excessive shadow on the sides anymore that makes her look masculine or has a three o'clock, five o'clock shadow on the side of her temple. Right? Same face. that You painted this, not me. Okay? So, 
Any questions before I get going? Any questions about the challenge, about the dragon challenge? I, I think I covered all the issues um, from this. I'm so sorry I've run out of time. For this piece, the head size is too feminine. The cranium is too feminine. It's not masculine enough. Guy's head's like a bald guy. Um, bald, handsome guy. Images have very, very sculpted, uh, just like skeletal heads. You know, they're not perfect circles. They got all kinds of bumps and bruises on them. And it's not, it's not a deformity. It's just how the skeleton is, how the skeleton of the head is. All right, it's not a perfect circle, but bald woman. <laughs> bald. Bald woman is very like it's just a very circular shape. Her head was particularly off, but very very circular shape, a lot less square. <laughs> beautiful beautiful bald lady here. Well, her yeah of course, but him. <laughs> okay, very very circular, very spherical. I don't know if these are real. I don't know if they're edited. Some of these are edited. But I think some people out there are like out to make celebrities look bald. I, I don't know why people edit celebrity faces. All right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Beck, what is the dragon challenge? Um, so the conversation with the dragon is the next community challenge that I have you guys working on while I'm off. Um, so you just have to go to the community and look at the pinned message at the top um i'll post wait a second where's my pinned message oh there it is uh welcome to this month's design challenge um so please read this um the design theme is a conversation with a dragon read the little piece of writing that i have here and paint along it a lot of people have made such beautiful submissions already um, it's basically a traveler speaking with a dragon and the dragon is not allowing them passage So you're supposed to create that conflict in the illustration um, as you have interpreted it and uh, I think that this is a it's just a great way to keep you guys busy But I think it's a wonderful mix of fantasy and, and landscape requirement for your portfolios uh, Dragons are awesome dragons are, <laughs> are the best um, Which is why I chose a dragon a lot of people said that they love this challenge because um, you know, that's why they started drawing. I know one person commented that the dragon is a particularly inspirational topic for them, which is it's the same exact for me. Um, I love dragons. So, yeah, just go ahead. I recommend the passage from Wizard of Earthsea, uh, or, uh, Ged's conversation with Yavad, and, of course, Bilbo's conversation with Smog um, are two really, really big ones. Okay, so uh, how do you feel about the Riley and Loomis methods for learning con to construct faces? I think they're pretty well grounded along the form and the temples. Be careful, some of those have line indicators that help you find symmetry. Some of those lines do not transfer into the final render. They are just guiding lines. They are not lines that are preserved in the general structure of the face. Uh, they can make you learn faces that are too similar. T um, a lot of those faces from the Loomis or Riley methods don't allow you to draw a variety of faces. They're very concrete sets, like a singular face, um, which can make you paint very, very stale looking faces. You need to develop, uh, you need to draw enough with them using a reference. Do not try to draw only with those methods to draw a face. You end up drawing the same one. But if you do a traceover diagram of a photo of a face, um, then you will be able to kind of preserve in your memory, in your visual library, more varieties of faces. Why can't we render the eyebrows at least to some point? Not every single hair, but a little less much. Um, why can't you? You can. That's exactly what I say. You're not allowed to render every single hair, and you are allowed to smudge it. If it's a very thick eyebrow, find a good reference for it. But the references that you find um, that are of thick eyebrows are not uh, is not a level of resolution you can get away with because it's a photograph. It gets away with it because it's a photograph. So everything should be a an illusion of the eyebrow texture, not the texture itself. But I've never said you can't render eyebrows. I just said you cannot leave them floating like they are stickers or stuck on the skin. Um, uh, you don't draw every single eyebrow on the eyebrow, on the hair, 
You don't draw every single hair on the eyebrow because you don't see every single hair on the eyebrow when you look at someone's face. That's why. That's the that's the just the end all reason. Yes, I am actually getting surgery to replace my fingers with paintbrushes. That's exactly what my surgery on Tuesday is. <coughs> I'm sorry, I've run out of time. I can't look at everyone's work. Uh, forgive me. Thank you for the luck. Wishes, wishes of, well, wishes, thank you. <laughs> Should Dragon Challenge be full colored or is it is grayscale allowed? Grayscale is allowed, but full color is encouraged for your portfolio. Um... Is it okay uh, to ask about how to paint faces in a candle uh, chandelier kind of light environment? It's very dim, long shadows, extreme spikes of saturation and contrast, and those candle lights are more warm and more are less white because they're cooler than the sun. So they are more warm and darker and redder and more orange. So a candle is not as hot as the sun. So that means that we should be painting with a cooler flame, which is, which is more colored. Um, it's not white hot. <clears throat> the sun is still very yellow and warm. Uh, but, yes. At least it's not blue. That would be weird if we had a high mass sun. <clears throat> Dragons are the best wyverns. Take a rest. <laughs> Could you uh, please answer? Okay, I got that. Um, <laughs> any more questions? Let me see if any more questions. When is the challenge thumbnails uh, due? They're not just thumbnails, it's a final render as well after you've painted your thumbnails and they are due. Um, when I get back, I'll announce the due date. So I haven't given you a due date because I, I don't know when I'm going to be back and back enough in enough time with enough vitality to last for a two hour or an hour and a half stream for the challenge. Um, you post your 14 day challenge submissions on the community wall. Uh, so the... Uh, community wall is, did I close it? Right over here. If you want to join the class, this is your first time, just go to istabrak.com and click on the little G plus button right over there and join the community. Read the rules. Please don't post sketches. I delete sketches. I don't care if they're figure sketches or whatever. If it's a single sketch, I'm deleting it. If you want to post your figures, you want to post your quick doodle of a figure, um, if you want to post your quick doodle of a face, you post them together as a bulk. You do not post sketch by sketch. You do not post more than once a day. You want to post all your drawings, post them as one bulk post so that people can see them and give you a full review of your portfolio or your latest work. Just like this person has, has done very nicely. Thank you, Noah, for posting all your sketches at the same time. It works for us to see the greater picture of your errors or the greater picture of your improvement when you have more than one instance of a sketch instead of just, you know, just one little look into your work one little five second sketch also it's not good to waste your you know daily post on a sketch <clears throat> and you're not allowed to post daily anyway ideally but that's it for today thank you everyone for your well wishes i will not be seeing you guys for i think two weeks at least one week up to two weeks hopefully not three weeks um and i will as soon as i get back i'll announce when i'll be back and when we get back we'll just go jump straight into some more critiques and just continue having fun maybe the first day back will be the dragon challenge which will be really cool nice little celebratory celebratory day back um for us and um thank you all for your well wishes i gotta say i'm nervous <laughs> what can i do i have to do this um i will stream as much as possible on after hours i'll keep myself in contact with you guys i'll stay on discord and uh, no, Discord is closed. If you want to be part of Discord, you have to apply through Facebook, and you have to be at least like a month or two months into the the, the, the community so you can be part of Discord. Uh, it's a little tight knit family in there, and um, it's mostly people who are daily who are really part of this uh, community very very closely, not just passersby. Uh, but if you feel like you're not just a passerby, you'd love to be a part of the daily conversation with me and my friends. Um, um, I. <laughs> I really quickly, before I go, wanted to add um, just some memes. <laughs> this one is wonderful. I really like this piece, but the one thing I would change... No! <laughs> this is beautiful. Um, when you're being critiqued on stream and the before and after. <laughs> Oh my gosh, beautiful. <laughs> and this one. 
Um, your art sucks because you play League. <laughs> your art sucks because you play League! That's true, but I play League. Um, when you think you're a good student, but then Issa Rex says to write something <laughs> back to her and you already forgot what she said. <laughs> that's, that's so true. <laughs> Um, me, let's do form studies. Also me, now nah, let's make a master. <laughs> me, let's practice drawing eyes realistically. Nah, let's play our own style. Oh my god. Um, here's another one. Um, Ista, what have you done with Bob and Steve? No one knows. Hmm. <laughs> this is glorious. This is perfect. <laughs> that face when she finally drops the challenge resource. <laughs> Is that right that back to me? Say it again. <laughs> Alright class, what do you like to add to Porsche Studio? Figures, heads. What's the Discord? I'm laughing so hard I scared of what's going away. I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> oh, so this is me. Irma Gerd. Cash at Earth. find some more. <laughs> She's talking about farts now. <laughs> the moths. <laughs> He's crying. <laughs> My poor moths. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my god. I'm watching is to destroy your painting in a critique. And she asks who made her. <laughs> oh god, Jeremy, have mercy. These are so funny. Oh my god, I can't breathe. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, let me see if I can find some more. These are so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if I know what this one means. Ista turns on face cam. That's a bold move, Antares. Let's see if it pays off. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember what this is about. <laughs> I love this one so much. <laughs> Ista, what have you done with Bob and Steve? <laughs> oh my God! I'll see. <laughs> I'll see you guys in two weeks. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day guys. Bye.